So just a couple more joining. I have one more left in the waiting room and and we and and I'll, I'll then continue to let them in from there Kevin and you can begin if you'd like. Okay. Okay. Um, first of all, welcome everyone. I uh, appreciate you guys taking the time. Uh, my name is Kevin McCloskey. I'm the Chief Operating Officer at King's Hammer Soccer Club. Um, first of all, we're we're very excited about some of the announcements that were made over the last 48 hours. And we will be offering soccer programs um, in the Sycamore and surrounding areas. Um, so we're very excited about that. Very excited to share some more information um, today. Before we get deep into kind of just the, the next steps, um, I'm going to turn it over uh, to John Mercurio, who has just a, a few words uh, to express based on some thoughts with his. Thank you, Kevin. Um, before I start, I just want to thank the Sycamore Premier SC Board and recognize those members who have been instrumental in all of this. Um, Brad Moeller, Tim Bennett, Scott Reynolds, and Sarah Abbott. Anybody that knows them knows they're A1 first-rate community members, and they've spent countless volunteer hours in helping us get here. On behalf of the Sycamore Premier SC Board and our membership, we are very excited with this announcement of Kings Hammer Sycamore. As members within our club know, our focus has always been on making decisions that prioritize the interests of kids and their families within the framework of competitive club soccer. We have grown rapidly in just five years from one to nine to 15 to 19 to 23 teams and continue to grow. We've attributed this success to creating a Sycamore First community experience by bringing club soccer into your backyard with local practices and local games and reducing travel times for players and their families. Guided by you through our annual surveys, the Sycamore Premier Board has always followed a model of continuous improvement. And as you will hear today, here are some of the challenges that have been within SPSC that we can now address with the creation of this new KHS as supported with the resources and scale of the broader Kings Hammer Network. First, the pipeline of certified trainer pool was low and now it is deep. We've created pathway opportunities for players of all abilities to reach their full potential. There's an ability now to roster players from the larger Kings Hammer Network to fill out light rosters and build depth. Last, the foundation is now laid for U15 through U19 to supplement the high school offseason. Also, you will recognize familiar faces on and off the field, the uniforms, the colors, local participation, flexibility for the multi-sport athlete, optional participation in summer and winter programs, and a similar cost structure. I want you to know that the leadership of both Sycamore Premier and Kings Hammer have worked to get into this moment for the last two years, ensuring that what you like most about Sycamore Premier and what you would like to see improve can be delivered with professionalism, ability, and scale by Kings Hammer, one of the oldest, largest, and most respected soccer programs in our region. Personally, my son and his friends from the original SPSC team have been in Kings Hammer for the past two years, and we have a firsthand confirmation of the quality of the program. In closing, we have had many conversations with other clubs over the years, and I can honestly say that Kevin McCloskey and Kings Hammer truly understands and embraces the idea of a fusion of a community club model that can be supplemented with even greater opportunities for our kids. They have already successfully implemented this model in Bluegrass. 
this is a customer service driven organization with a clear and distinct approach to player development in soccer. They are committed to making KHS the greatest soccer program in the region, which is a huge win for our Sycamore community and economy. The Sycamore Premier SC Board encourages you to register for the KHS program and be part of something great. So let's go Sycamore. Kevin? John, fantastic. Thank you for, for those words and, and certainly for that in, endorsement as well. Uh, just to echo, you know, I think this conversation started um, probably about two years ago and we've had some deep conversations, not with just yourself, but your board as well. And we certainly appreciate all of that open dialogue and that transparency. Um, our goal and objectives are to make and improve and to grow, um, obviously, the foundations that you've built. So we appreciate that. Um, as we go on, I would like to just kind of give you some reminders and set, you know, somewhat of an uh, agenda as we go forward. Uh, Vince Gentili, um, who is the Director of Soccer Operations for King's Hammer, will be the moderator for today. Um, if you have questions, you can uh, just leave them at the bottom on the chat. And once we get past our FAQ section of this presentation, uh, Vince will come back with some of those questions if we do not cover um, if you could keep yourselves on mute as we go through, obviously, just so we can be uh, productive with the presentation um, as we go through, we certainly welcome those questions, like I mentioned, in the chat box at the bottom. Um, I would like to start off just by introducing some people. Um, we are thrilled uh, to retain some of the key employees um, that have also been able to service the, the greater Sycamore area um, through soccer. Kathy Mercurio, who's going to be uh, King Hammer Sycamore's Administrative Director. We're very excited about Kathy coming on board. Um, Brian Middleton will be the Director of Operations. And Ewan Blur will be the Director of Coaching. And you'll hear from all three of them through this presentation at some point. Um, in addition to that, I would also like to introduce some of our senior staff at King's Hammer. Um, that work within the various divisions. Uh, Kevin Butler is our Chief Branding Officer. Kevin is also on the presentation today. Uh, Vince Gentili is our Director of Soccer Operations. And like I mentioned before, Vince will be the moderator for this. And Dave MacGyver, uh, our Senior Director for Events. And Dave has also taken the time to join us today on the presentation. This presentation will be recorded and posted. Um, so if you have obviously other family members that maybe couldn't join or watch, um, we will record it, we are recording it, and we will repost it on various websites, Sycamore Premier's website, and of course King's Hammer's website, so you guys can view at a later date, or if you wanted to, you could also share. Um, as we go through the sections, um, our hope and our objective is to be able to present a vision of not just what King's Hammer Sycamore um, will be and what we stand for, but also the greater network that John referred to as well with King's Hammer Soccer Club. Um, there's been a lot of people that have obviously contributed to the success of our club over the years, uh, and we're very proud of the product, the organization, and more importantly, the people that we have um, within the club uh, as we are today. So as we go through these slides, we'll just spend a little bit of time, I'll talk through, So this is our mission statement. And our mission obviously is to positively impact the development of our youth and community by providing soccer and educational opportunities to young people of all ages and playing abilities and to create a lifelong passion for the sport of soccer. We will play an active role in leadership development and personal growth of our players and staff by serving an active member of our community through service, partnerships and programs. Our ultimate goal as a club is to encourage to inspire, to empower each player and coach, to be able to reach the highest level possible within the game and their lives, while helping develop leaders and individuals who will inspire others to do the same. So the unique thing about the mission statement, and we spent a lot of time on this with our current staff, our coaches, uh, our directors of coaching and our staff, and some feedback as well from our, our parents and our, our players, in what we wanted to try to achieve. And as we went through kind of the creation 
not just of our mission statement, we felt like these five core values were very, very important. And we actually have a sixth core value that we will add, and this will come directly from the players. So we want players' investment in this, and we want them to, to be a part of this. Uh, we're obviously trying to teach them as well um, to be creative thinkers, to think uh, as leaders as well, and, and to own and to buy into what we all agree upon, which are these values. So obviously respect, treat each person with dignity and courtesy. Leadership, empower yourself and others to enjoy success on and off the pitch. Three, integrity, do the right thing and follow the golden rule. Four, which is passion in everything that we do. We wanna energize, engage, inspire, not just yourself, but other people around you. And then creativity, always thinking outside the box being innovative and also using your imagination when you can. So these are somewhat new. We, we've taken the time, like we said, to create these core values, but we feel they're very important. And as a broader organization, uh, these will be guiding references for everybody. This is just a, a quick page and summary, just as an organization uh, over the last 13 years and even more, if you look at just our, our deeper history, but some of the accolades that we've had, some of the championships, you know, go back obviously to this slide as well. You know, we feel like these are always important areas to remember, but we don't just get lost in just results. We, we find that performance um, outweighs results and being able to establish performance, we have to have principles and we have to have values uh, to be able to be successful on and off the field. Uh, but as you can see, obviously, we've had some greater success as we went through the years with some of these numbers. As we get deep into kind of the pathway, and, and as these slides come down, you'll start to understand how this connects then to the future and how we want to service communities um, throughout Greater Cincinnati, specific, obviously, to Sycamore and Kingshammer Sycamore. Um, the first program will be the juniors program, which is club development. It's really an introduction into youth soccer, which is competitive soccer. Um, Recreation and Lions and Little Lions below that, as you can see. Little Lions is a new program that we've not really launched yet. Um, it is tied into really that grassroots development throughout the city where we can go in with schools. Uh, already currently we service like CPS where we offer free uh, programming through a fruits all program. Uh, so the little lines for us will be a little bit broader in scope, but we want to try to get in. We wanna to try to just introduce younger uh, kids and organization to the game of soccer, and then building into recreation. You know, recreation is different, obviously in different parts of this city and the market, but is how we can support recreational programs, how we can create a bridge uh, with recreation to really again, develop and cultivate that grassroots development approach. As we get in now to the juniors and the youth, like we talked about, uh, for our community programs, for Kingshammer um, and for Kingshammer Sycamore, the juniors is that first step. You know, that's for us four to seven years old, um, introducing the, the players to some of the coaches, uh, some of the facilities, uh, very much localized uh, as we go through that. Then graduating into the youth program, that's sevens to tens, um, same type of approach where you know, it's focused on our younger population to try to uh, inspire them, to really try to, to plant the seed of loving the game, uh, introducing them to the ball. And, but as we go through it, it starts to become obviously a lot more organized and professionalized as we go through from sevens to tens. As we make the jump from sevens to tens into the pre-academy program, the pre-academy program goes from 11 to U19. This is certainly, again, a little bit more advanced as far as commitment, uh, as far as professionalism, um, but again, trying to incorporate all of the local uh, community of players that are interested in playing for Kingshammer Sycamore. And then above that, the highest level programming that we have is our academy program. And with academy, we've had this established since 2013. Um, it's been very successful, not just in the city, but in this region on a national level as well. And that requires, you know, for, for the players that are interested, a higher level of commitment. 
and you know we have some teams already that are participating on national levels on regional levels and on state and local levels as well but with the academy and we'll get through this kind of as a network um, the big piece and the big jigsaw puzzle we want to connect is to have this as a pathway you know potentially for some sycamore players that might be interested uh, when we feel it's ready and, and obviously the coaches and the staff feel like that's an appropriate jump. Okay, so just spend a little bit of time talking about our partners. Um, as we grow as an organization and, and try to raise the bar, partnerships and uh, strategies are very, very important. And, you know, being able to essentially garner these partnerships as we went through this, this uh, period of growth has been very, very important. And as we look forward as well, you know, trying to identify uh, the right partners to, to partner with is going to be something that, that's very important for us as we move forward. But of course, our partners, Nike and Soccer.com, um, they provide our, our uniforms, a lot of support for our staff, um, obviously service our families and our players. Uh, Demosphere is a um, online platform which uh, I know the, the entire state of Ohio South was moving towards that for registration. We've used Demosphere now, I think about seven years. Uh, they've been a great partner, but as far as registration for tryouts, uh, player accounts, things like that, Demosphere are a great tool uh, to be able to assist. As we go on to Techni, Techni, especially in the, the challenge and the crisis that we face right now, have been a fantastic partner. Uh, Techni provide at-home uh, development through an app. Um, it can be set where it's just individual, where the player goes and sits and, and tries to work on his own. It can be set where it's uh, player versus player on his team. It can be team versus team. And it also can be club versus club. So they've been fantastic with us. Um, and it's just a, a virtual app. The players can continue to, to work at home um, on their own on their own time. Sports Recruits um, is a recruitment platform um, that we've used now for the last three years. So for players 15 and above that do have the aspiration to go on and play college soccer, uh, Sports Recruit is a great platform. Um, you have the ability to go in and obviously enter your personal information that college coaches have access to. Uh, you can set uh, a radius of schools that you're looking to search. You can set in certain parameters if it's a big school, small school, um, you know, if it's a private, public, all of those different filters um, Sports Recruits provides. So they have been a, a fantastic partner uh, to King's Hammer and our network. Playmetrics um, has been a very robust platform. Um, you may be familiar with Team Snap. Uh, Playmetrics is, is really a step above Team Snap. It's not only a communication platform for our club, but it's also uh, a, a technology partner where we can use for evaluations. So if we wanted to create a profile for a player, we can log some of the assessments and evaluations onto that profile. That profile stays with that player throughout his club journey. And we also use Playmetrics not just for communication and evaluations, but also for scheduling, for updates, and for team chat. So it's a very robust platform. Uh, we brought this in back, uh, I think, the end of January, actually, and it's been fantastic. Um, Healthy Roster is an app that Bacon and Christ have worked to, to kind of help us with. Uh, Healthy Roster, essentially, if you were at a game, and your, your child picks up an injury, and for whatever reason, there's not a trainer on site, uh, Healthy Roster provides you access to virtual assessment uh, from a physical trainer. Uh, there's a lot of follow-up uh, items that you can choose through Healthy Roster as well to set up, uh, you know, potentially a, a follow-up meeting or schedule an appointment as well. And, and that's something that's been very well received by our membership since we introduced it. Beacon in Christ, uh, we're now going into, I believe it's our fifth uh, year as partners with Beacon in Christ. Um, I know that's uh, obviously a, a big medical partner for us, and it's an area that, that can certainly service uh, the, the broader and greater Sycamore areas as well. Um, but we've been very pleased with, with Beacon in Christ and everything that they've done for us. 
and they are currently our uniform uh, sponsors at this time as well. Okay, so just uh, real quick, we'll just go through some of our directors and our staff. Um, I introduced the four people, obviously, myself, Kevin Butler, Vince Gentili, and Dave MacGyver. And, and like we said, this will be recorded. This is also on our website as well. So if you ever want to go back and find out a little bit more just about their bios, by all means do that. But, um, you know, they're, they're fantastic staff to work with. We're very lucky uh, to have such a great, great group of staff. And we're very excited about welcoming now our, our new key staff onto our platform as well. These are some of our directors that work within the various programs. Again, you can take the time and, and kind of go through. Uh, very qualified staff. Um, some of the highest level of um, experience and qualifications. And then as we get into obviously now our, our King's Hammer Sycamore directors, um, I know there will be some more staff on a technical level that will be assisting on this platform, but even going back, and I, I talked with Brian about this over the last couple of days too, just the network and the experience of these other directors, um, we talk on a daily, on a weekly basis, not just about uh, the technical approach for development, but also how we approach uh, each specific, how we communicate, how we improve uh, the parent experience, the player experience, the coach's experience. Um, and so for all of those experiences and conversations, um, we are very excited to, to welcome Blur and Brian and Kathy, uh, because we feel as well that they will add a lot of experience uh, we feel like there will be a very strong connection into the community as well. And that's something that we're very much looking forward to uh, as we go ahead. You already referenced the, the King's Hammer Network. And, and John alluded to this just at the start of the presentation as well. Um, about two years ago, we started a program in a community uh, just out of Lexington, uh, an area called Versailles, so the greater Lexington area. And King's Hammer Bluegrass from that has been fantastic. Actually, we're getting ready to start our first uh, event series that will be in that, that town and being able to service that community this August. And so far it's grown from strength to strength, uh, but a lot of the values and a lot of the principles that, that we talked with John about on the board uh, was part of what we had already established with Bluegrass. And as we look forward to Sycamore, you know, the network that we've been able to connect in these pieces of the puzzle and bring it together, we feel strongly that we will be greater uh, because of the relationships and because of the partnerships that we can form. So as we get into you know, more specific about the Sycamore program, three things really stood out. When, I, when we talked with uh, John and the board, you know, one thing was flexibility, right? making sure that you had different options, making sure that you know, a, a player that maybe wanted to play other sports had the opportunity to do that. Maybe a, a player or a family that's in a situation that needed further help with payment plans um, or account setup, we could do that. Uh, as far as trying to think outside of the box as well with players potentially moving or receiving different experiences, well, now part of our greater network, we can also do that and, and provide additional flexibility. The second thing which was massive uh, was community, the sense of community. You know, we wanted to make sure as well as we went forward that this is successful within the greater Sycamore area, right? We wanted to make sure that we could engage, uh, obviously with facilities and things like that. You'll see that as we go through the presentation, but also with the people. And I think you know, that was certainly one thing that, that John and I spent a lot of time talking about. Um, I felt it was very important just to get to know again uh, some things that had happened in the past, good and bad, some things that were current, and then what the expectations were going to be going forward. And, and I think we've been able to have those conversations and be progressive, and that's certainly going to be a massive focus as we go forward. And the last thing is fun, right? We have to have fun in this journey, not just the kids as well, but also the staff members, the coaches, the, the parents. Um, this has to be fun. In, in obviously a, a day and age where there's enough different challenges, um, we have to understand that this is still 
youth soccer. This is a, an opportunity to make a, a massive impression in young people's lives. And as I said, it, it's not just about the players that will have those experiences, but also the young coaches, uh, the young directors, right? Directors that will come in with experience and be able to help um, some of the parents that maybe are new into uh, soccer for the first time. Trying to create that fun and that positive experience for all. Okay, so as we just get into the staff, I'm going to pass this off uh, to Brian and to Blur um, so they can talk specifically about the coaching staff and, and what they've been able to create for the year ahead. Hey, thanks, Kevin. Hey, guys. Um, once again, to turn the speaker down. Uh, thanks for um, having this meeting to help us and everyone in Sycamore understand, you know, that we really have a bright future, you know, as a Sycamore family and to help clear some of the questions and concerns that they have. You know, it's, it's been my pleasure over the years to be a part of, you know, the Sycamore community and, you know, being engaged in the sport that I love in a community club. You know, I myself grew up in a community club and I know the effects it has on the community on a whole. Um, we have a tremendous coaching staff, which continually to get better. And I'm also expecting to even get a lot better as we move forward as we you know, moving in the King's Hammer and Sycamore directions. A lot of familiar faces, some well experienced coaches you know, well qualified. And also we probably go see a few new faces that comes in with very good qualification and experience just to add, you know, to the growth of our coaching staff. Um, we've had a lot of success over the years, you know, playing in various leagues, tournaments, and, you know, we'd like to continue that to, you know, be a place of fun, success, and help develop these kids as real good soccer players. Uh, on our coaching staff, on the boys' side, for over 2014, we have Mario Magliani, Magliano. He's a familiar face. He's been in the Sycamore community for quite some time. Um, Rob Pembar and Haruna Magna, Maguna, Magunga for the 2013 boys. Um, Haruna has been around for a year has done pretty well with us over the last two seasons, you know, coaching the younger kids. Um, Brian Shaper, you know, who's enjoyed coaching his a younger team at the 2012. Um, Brian Middleton will be coaching at the 2011. Richard King, Geary Gale at the 2010. Brian Whistle and also Geary Gale with our Oh, 09 boys, myself and Jabari with the 08 boys, Rob Pembar with the 07 boys. And on the girls' side, we have um, Mario Magliano with the 2014 girls, Haruna Mangunga and Rob Pembar with the 2013 girls, Colleen Darren with our 2011, Richard King, Sharika Ingram, both who have been in the club, not familiar faces again. For uh, 09 girls, it's Sharika and Gary, Gary Gale. 08 girls, we have Ron Pembar. And for the 06 girls, this will be myself. Um, we also have 2012 girls and 2007 girls on um, coaching staff, which we're trying to finalize to be determined. Um, very soon. Okay. Leagues we played in, um, we're younger teams, normally played in the EPL and the GCSL. When I say younger teams, I'm referring to our U7 to U10 teams. And our U11 and up normally plays in the Buckeye League. Um, Tournaments we played in is, you know, just to name a few, is the Cincinnati West 
um, Adidas Warrior, the Mask, the Crown Challenge, Blue Chip, the Epic Cup, Dog Days, and Fill the Net. So all these tournaments we normally go, we always have some really good success. We're, we always have a lot of finalists and winners. And it's something that I know the kids look forward to and the coaching staff themselves also enjoy. So. Great. Thank you, Blair. I appreciate that summary. Um, just to, to go back, you know, obviously we, we just talked about the coaching staff and going into this as well. So the breakdown just of, of programming, um, you know, the model for King's Hammer, it's all inclusive. So when we talk about the fees, um, we would never come back and ask for additional, you know, um, payments or, or assessments or things like that. Um, so this is something that we've done probably for about seven years. It's been very successful. Um, we feel like just a, a transparent approach, uh, approach where we provide value and it's understood, I think is the best way uh, to go through this. And yes, there's times maybe there's an, an adjustment, right? And we saw it obviously this past year where there's maybe a, a tournament that, that's been cancelled for some reason or a league has been cancelled or whatever. And so obviously with this, we always try to be proactive. We always try to replace and, and I think the, the big thing where Joel mentioned about customer service, this is something that we pride ourselves in. We always want to make sure that there is value and that there's clear understanding about what we're offering as a development product and service. So as you can see, kind of the breakdown just by the ages, um, the fall season, obviously for the sevens and eights is August, October. They come back then for a spring season in March and May, the price point is 625. And then the value, uh, of the things that are offered and are covered within that. Uh, the only thing really on this page that's not covered would be the uniforms. Um, and we'll talk about that when we get into the FAQs. That's similar and typical to, to all clubs. Uh, and I believe that's current, um, or even the current, the, the programs that were with Sycamore Premier. So nothing has changed on that end. Um, as you get through, obviously, 2011s, the 12s, the 9s and 10s, similar setup as far as season. Uh, but obviously some more as far as tournaments, training, the price points obviously for some of these entrance fees go up the older that they get. Um, the 11s, the 19s, then that pre-academy program, um, which will continue to, to be green and gold and white you know, as far as uh, uh, visibility and, and what that's you know, stood to be. Um, 11s and 14s, obviously they have a fall and a spring season. So same thing where they're going August to October. March to May, and um, the price point for this is $1,000. Obviously, again, the prices go up for the entrances uh, for the, the different tournaments and the leagues that they're playing in. And then for the 15s to 19s, which we know is new uh, for this area, but this is something that's going to build over time. You know, this is gonna be dependent on, of course, um, you know, some of the players that are interested, players that wanna stay within that local community. Uh, but for 15s to 19s, this is something that we have obviously offered programs and services in the past, and that stays consistent, obviously, with, with that price. Um, as we go through here, the next one, Volta. And let me just show you, before we go to Volta, let me look at the, this just the year ahead. I think this is always kind of helpful. So you can look at the different seasons, the fall season highlighted in orange. You get into the November, December, January, so some of those winter months. We offer a program called Volta and Futsal. And Brian, Blur, and myself are talking about additional winter offerings, potentially for Kings Hammer Sycamore, what they may look like. We'll provide those updates and, and opportunities when we feel we're in a good place with that. Uh, but going through then into to February, obviously maybe a little bit of downtime or some extended winter opportunities for the players and for the families that want more, right? This is not a case of you have to do this. This is a case of, we have it as an opportunity if you want to do it. Spring season then is highlighted in, in blue, March through May. Um, and then we have camps, which we will have local uh, in the area, the, the greater Sycamore area, uh, to be able to offer specific camps. If it's based on technique, if it's based on um, you know position specific, if it's striker, goalkeeper, whatever that might be. We, we offer a, a range of camps and we'll be working with current staff to offer those camps. We'll have more information once those conversations occur 
at a later date. So just to go back up to Volta, Volta is this winter program that we had highlighted for those three months. Uh, we went through Volta and the launch of Volta this past year. Uh, very successful program in its first year. Uh, it's specific just to futsal. Uh, Tony Capurro, uh, who's been a long time serving director at King's Hammer, uh, oversees the Volta program. Um, going forward, we would love to have some of the staff from King's Hammer Sycamore as well um, being a part of Volta. But this is a, an opportunity for, for players that want to go, that are very serious about their development, that um, like and enjoy kind of the, the futsal approach, which is a little bit different, obviously, to the outside typical soccer programming. But it, it provides that opportunity to compete with some of the strong teams, not just in the city, but also the region. And, and we feel like through the training and through the competition on the various platforms, uh, that it's well worth it. And it's obviously a, a very good development platform um, that we're very excited about. So there'll be more of this information. This information's on our website as well. Um, if you guys want to dive into that, like we mentioned, this is a, a, a program that you're not required to sign up for. This is purely by choice. And um, once you get to that stage and you want to make that decision. We just covered this, Blur had took the time just to, to talk about some of the events, some of the leagues that we're looking towards. Um, as we go in through just uh, kind of the, the leagues, uh, the years and the facilities, I'm going to pass this over to Brian uh, just to talk a little bit about this. Uh, thank you, Kevin. Um, so again, as you guys can see um, on the screen, the Sycamore training, uh, local games, it will still be in Sycamore School District, Sycamore High School, Francis Rec, Blue Ash Rec, Sycamore Junior High, Weller Park, and Swain that we've always been at. And uh, <clears throat> we uh, intend on keeping it local in Sycamore. Again, this is for the Sycamore community to keep it in the Sycamore community, but also um, if you want more, you have the ability to go for more. Um, and then for tryouts and registration, so you, everybody should have gotten a new link for registration for uh, at kingshammer.com. Uh, make sure you choose the Sycamore program, your age, your correct age, um, with the tryouts this year and, and the direction of Ohio South, um, the rosters will be created and, uh, and offers will be starting May 26th, next Tuesday. Um, and then, and it will be through Demosphere. It'll be an accept or decline, just like we've always done with a $250 deposit. If you accept, which we have always done as well uh, to secure your spot, um, and then also in the next few days, you should be hearing from coaches um, to uh, give you feedback from the fall to spring as well. Awesome. Thank you, Brian. Thanks, Kevin. Okay, so just as we, we kind of go through here, <clears throat> we're getting into the, the FAQs. Um, John and I worked on some of these. Uh, I know John talked with not just the, the – his board, but you know, just trying to get some feedback of potential questions that could come up. Um, I know Vince has been moderating this session as well and taking some questions. And for any questions that we don't touch on as we go through kind of this FAQ section of the presentation, uh, we'll be sure to come back and, and try to answer some of those questions. So, first one, will will fees change? Well, obviously, we we provided um, the the outline of the fees. It is all inclusive. I think when you add it up, I talked to John just a little bit earlier, I think it ends up being maybe just uh, slightly cheaper um, for this first year, but there's a couple of little adjustments as far as uh, offerings based on, you know, John and I talked and we, we, we thought about uh, what was going to be important for the year ahead, right? And just making sure that we weren't over committing as well and, and being able to provide that additional value as far as a price point. Uh, we certainly felt was the, the first and the best approach. Um, will we keep our current uniforms? Yes. Um, for this next year, um, 
you will remain in your, your current uh, Sycamore uniforms. Um, we felt, again, it was a case of how do we make this an easier transition for parents and for families. We didn't want to be caught in between a uniform cycle where there's additional cost incurred because of it. And getting through this first year, um, we would then line up where we would have to have a new uniform cycle as a King's Hammer organization anyway. And so with that, then in the second year, we would unveil obviously the, the, the new uniform that would still have the same colors. So the Sycamore green and gold, it would have the new King's Hammer Sycamore crest, and it would be in our, our new sponsor, which is Nike. So that would happen in year two. Year one, like we mentioned, um, you would stay with the, the current uniforms that teams have. For players that would be joining, uh, potentially from the outside, there might be a sibling who wants to start playing, and um, you will go through the same process. The, the same uniform is available. I talked with John today about that. Uh, you have the same opportunity to still purchase that from the local vendor, Soccer Village. So that's still an opportunity and an option. Uh, and obviously getting through this, we're going to try to make this as seamless as possible as we go through. Um, well, we still have parent coaches. Yes, absolutely. I think the, the big thing for that, Brian uh, and I and, and Blur talked about this deeply. We just want to make sure that the parent coaches, first of all, have support. And, and as they go through, start to have the experience. You know, we want to help not just parent coaches, but parents, right, with coaching education and, and just education of the game as well. And we want this to be an inclusive approach. Um, so we will continue to have parent coaches. Uh, but we want to make sure that they have enough resource to grow uh, um, as they move forward. Do uh, Sycamore kids get offered uh, before outside Sycamore kids? Sorry, do kids offer before outside Sycamore kids? No, um, and, and again, this is based on just the information that I've gathered from John, has done in the past to try selection and team formation uh, will continue to be similar in the process as we move forward. Uh, there will be a green, a gold, and a white hierarchy, uh, of course, as we go through. We want to build competitive teams, and going through this process, it's important uh, for all players to always be placed um, on the appropriate team. Just one of the notes, Brian, as well, to add, and just to think about, we, we discussed this. Given the this, this certain you know, circumstances that we're in right now, and for players uh, that maybe didn't get the full evaluation, or assessment this past spring, they joined late or they moved teams or whatever that is. Think forward to the fall. The fall time is going to be massive for the players, for the coaches, and for the staff as well to go through a very thorough um, assessment and ev evaluation period. At the end of the fall, and our hope is again, just if there are slight adjustments with place, you know, as far as appropriate placement, that people understand that, that, that we've tried to. Uh, be fair and we've really tried to uh, assess and, and evaluate and at the end of it we all want the same thing we want players to be in environments where they thrive right we want them to be challenged but through appropriate competition and and that's something that, that we always think about uh, at king's hammer when we place our players on teams um, how are we different than other king's hammer teams well this is certainly uh, a very specific community approach as well um, is very similar to our bluegrass program and that has been successful um, even king's hammer you know we have obviously programs in northern kentucky and cincinnati as well through our central and through our size programs they're a greater community but they're still very much uh, meshed by the culture that we're trying to create and um, so the answer as far as how it's different it, it will certainly be a lot more focused on community um, as we move forward. Will we train in Sycamore? Yes, we will train in Sycamore. Uh, there will be times, you know, as far as training, that uh, we look to keep things as local as possible for games as well. You know, we talk about the network, some of the ideas as well. Within just Greater Cincinnati, we can do some cool things based on how we have things set up. You know, if it might be friendly games, uh, it might even be a, a King's Hammer challenge at one point where we can get teams from different communities playing against each other. Those are all things that we're going to look forward to uh, as, as we you know, uh, plant this network, really. But as far as training, we, we covered that, obviously, with the facilities. 
Um, those would be the, the training sites as we move forward. Will there be 15s to 18 teams? Yes, that's the plan. And, and that's something that, that's going to be progressive. Um, currently, there are no teams uh, above you know, those ages. And so our hope is that we can evolve uh, and cultivate the interest of players that are of high school age that want to play in their community. And, and also welcome players from outside of that community as well that might want to play based on the location, based on the community, uh, based on the coach. You know, there's obviously various reasons why players may want to play for Kings Hammer Sycamore. So the benefits for the membership uh, of the Alliance, uh, obviously, you know, we deliver professional youth development. Um, we want to try to continue uh, to have the engagement set forth by Sycamore Premier. I think that's been very, very important. Uh, players uh, of all ages and ability will be provided choices uh, for the levels that they want to reach. So we went back, you know, if you think through the pathway that we presented earlier, it's always about what is the best fit for the player. Is it being in, you know, kind of that pre-academy program? Is it being on you know, the, the green team, the white team, the gold team? Or is it potentially maybe playing for one of King's Hammer Academy teams? You know, these are all different pathways that we have the opportunity to present. Um, will the logo change? Yes, it will change. Um, this is our, our new logo. You can see just with my cursor right here. Um, it obviously will not be on the kits or the uniforms um, until the end of the season of the next year, 2021. Um, but it is something that we will start to, to kind of promote as we go forward. The uniform piece and challenge, uh, obviously we wanted to get around that and we wanted to make sure that it was an affordable uh, result or resolution, essentially. But as we move forward too, we want to be proud of King's Hammer Sycamore. We want the, the entire community to be proud of what that logo stands for and also the tradition and values that were built over time to create this foundation. Um, so we will start you know, promoting some kind of fan wars, maybe spirit wear things and items uh, so people can kind of have that visibility of that brand. The sponsors, uh, well, we have our, our own or King's Hammer. This is going to be a, a combination and we're going to continue to work through that. Um, obviously, with sponsorships, there are things that we have to be mindful of. Um, so we will definitely work towards that. We would love to engage some of local community support, um, but also on a, a broader scale, you know, we're looking to also partner, as you saw with some of our partners and our sponsors, uh, some other strategic uh, corporate sponsors that can help in different areas. Now, if it's facility development, um, if it's been able to uh, offer pr programs through Nike, uh, that might be able to go and, and provide additional platforms for players to develop or for coaches to learn or to be educated. We always want to look at, you know, the, the benefit in those sponsorships. Um, do we try out with all the other King's Hammer programs? No, um, unless you want to be considered for the academy. For this specific year, I would encourage you to stay within the program if you're a player coming back. Uh, to you know, King's Hammer Sycamore from your Sycamore team from last season, I would encourage you to come back to that same team for next year so that you have a fair chance, if you want to go into King's Hammer Academy, to be seen the right way. We are offering virtual assessment, but look, I'm going to be honest, it's not the, the, the perfect solution to be seen. If you stay within King's Hammer Sycamore and you stay within this network loop, we will make sure that you get the proper assessment, evaluation, and opportunities if that's what you desire as you move forward. Um, just the next question. Um, well, we have King's Hammer coaches and trainers. Well, obviously, we, we saw the staff presented by Brian uh, and by Blur. Um, we will obviously work together to try to help the staff in place. Uh, we always want to try to, to, to raise the bar. Um, through you know internal uh, coaching education where we can try to help them, but also external coaching education too. You know, we support all of our staff to go in through the federation's pathway, um, and, and we always want to try to not just push but support uh, and provide opportunities for coaches to do that. We will moving forward have a greater network of coaches, of course, 
Um, we've now been in existence that we like we talked about for over 13 years and further beyond that with with some of our history so through all of our staff and, and some of those other employees that you, you kind of saw on the graphics uh, we do have different networks right we that we can tap into that we want to maybe bring in just to help or to assist and, and that's I think the goal of all of us that we want to continue to grow together and to raise the bar as we move forward well, players from other King's Hammer programs come to play in Sycamore? Um, possibly, you know, it, it, it really depends, I think, um, as far as um, players and their interests. And if, if, you know, a player maybe lives in a certain area geographically that wants to come there, they may want to come and play as a player. As far as teams, you know, and programs, yes, we, we plan on doing that, I, I mentioned already cool ways that we can really strengthen this network, right? Of having potentially maybe even some of our teams from Lexington, Bluegrass, come up and play against teams in Sycamore or from our South or our Central programs. And I think the, the big thing as we go through this, you know, we offer, and, and Dave MacGyver, who's on here, does a fantastic job of offering uh, the events and tournaments that we provide. And we want Sycamore and that community to be a part of that, either by hosting, uh, through through games or through sites uh, because we, we feel like that is special. It's very special for our teams to even play in our own events and to see, you know, a, a team from Bluegrass and now to see a, a team from Sycamore and, and we're kind of working together, competing together. It's very unique. And I think that's something that, that hopefully we can provide uh, the greater Sycamore community. How will we have, or how will it be better so I just skip one actually about payments still go through SPSC. So payments actually will go through Demosphere. Uh, Brian talked about that as far as registration for tryouts. When you're sent an accept and a decline email, um, you're automatically logged in then to a Demosphere account. Um, once you pay the deposit, you've essentially committed to the spot. Um, from that, then you have a choice. Once you get through that stage, you have a choice. If you want to create a payment plan, if you wanted to pay in full, or if you wanted to pay in partial, there are different options on the back end once you go through that. Demosphere and King's Hammer, though, will uh, service uh, all of the financials for this platform as we go through. So with player fees, uh, we will manage it, um, both Kathy and, and Christy as well, um, who works here kind of within our headquarters, uh, will do a fantastic job. I know both of them uh, live and breathe this and they, they have a great understanding of it. So we're excited about being able to serve uh, our customer and obviously our, our consumer the player uh, a lot better as we move forward. Okay, the next question, sorry that I skipped. How is this better than what we have? Well, we talked about professional development and uh, this is something that we're serious about. I think if you look at the track record of, of players that have went through and, and play not just in high school, in you know professional development academies, players that have went on and played even for FC Cincinnati, um, and played at you know development academy levels and the boys and the girls that have went on and played in college, that have went on and played at professional levels as well. We have been fortunate to be able to develop and create that pathway for those players. But for players as well that, that want to go on and play high school that want to maybe get into coaching, that want to become a referee at some point as well. We, we take a step back and look at what, what are the needs of the greater soccer community? And that's where we talk about appropriate programming and also appropriate objectives and goals for those players. You know, not every player wants to play professional. Not every player wants to play college. They want to have the high school experience or they might want to get into you know, some leadership capacities through coaching. And we're, we're very proud of what we've been able to do in the past through that. Customer service, I think we've talked about that. And uh, talking about the inclusive approach to youth soccer, we believe in being transparent. Uh, we believe in being consistent. Are there times that we make mistakes? Yes, of course. I think we're, we're all human, but you know, for our track record, again, we've been very, very consistent in that space. Um, we feel like it will bring out you know, the, the best of what was here as far as the the Sycamore Premier model. Uh, we feel like elevating the scale of the community as well. Uh, we don't need to put the Sycamore community on the map. It's already on the map. How can we help? You know, how can we help if it's through 
programming, if it's through tournaments, if it's through, you know, bringing other people in that will provide assistance. That's what we're trying to do with this. Um, we will still have travel tournaments as a club. Yes, this is something that we do. Um, again, talk about community, think about culture. That's what we're trying to build, trying to improve as we go forward. So those things will not change. Those things, Brian and Blur uh, are very serious and Kathy as well are very serious about. And we will continue to go through those as we move forward. When we play in the leagues, we talked about that already, but we're always looking, of course, of ways that will provide our players and our coaches with a positive club centric approach. So we will continue uh, to support the local leagues and we're always looking at ways to try to improve uh, offerings as we move forward. Talked about the training camps, the winter and the summer camps already. Um, and then the last question here, how will the, the continuity of Sycamore Premier and the transition of Kings Hammer Sycamore be ensured? Well, I've, I've stated this from the beginning, um, the three key people that we have been able to retain are going to be huge. The coaching staff that I've not had, I, I know some of the coaching staff, but I've not had a chance to meet all of the coaches yet. Uh, I've heard nothing but great things about them. Um, I think the support that we have and the people that are obviously on this presentation from King's Hammer as well are very dedicated, are very motivated um, to making this the best, uh, you know, John talked about it, the best uh, local opportunity in this region. Uh, and that's something that, that we, we want. You know, we, we want to make sure that this is right for the community. This is right for uh, the people within the club and, and for the greater good of this club as well. You know, this is something that we feel strongly about and part of the reason why we're proud to offer soccer programming in this greater Sycamore area. Um, as we go through registration, I'll just hold off on that. I know Kathy's going to talk maybe on a couple of things just on registration. Vince, do you mind bringing up? And, and John, of course, please chime in uh, if there's some questions that have come up through the chat that you feel are pertinent that we need to, um, you know, add some additional context to. Um, I mean, there, there's some questions about some registration stuff. Um, I, I don't know if Kathy's going to be, you know, I'm going to say covering that right now or or, or not. Um, so I, mean, I could I could throw out a couple things here if you'd like, or we can wait until the end. Let's wait until the end if it's registration specific. If there's okay. anything else that, that might have came up that was. Yes. Um, so um, there was a question. Um, there were a lot of the questions were answered in terms of programming um, when you list the, when the teams were listed. Um, there is a question um, specifically about 2006 boys. Um, team, um, as well as uh, trapped, uh, you know, is there a team offering for trapped eighth graders? Sure. I think, um, I think Brian and Blur, I don't want to overstate anything and put them in a difficult position. But I think for specific questions, I know Brian and Blur are talking with their coaches. Their coaches are, are going to be giving real feedback, obviously, to the players on current teams as well. But for any specific questions that you might have about an age group, about a trap program as well. Um, that is something that I, I would encourage you to reach out to Brian and to Blur. Um, I think we'll be able to, to get you some real answers um, in, in a you know, short time window. All right, now that sounds good. Um, there, there was a question about uh, um, scholarship for uh, scholarship opportunities for players. Yep, absolutely. Um, last year, we, I think we donated close to $75,000 in total to our scholarship fund, um, which is obviously very significant. Um, it's something that, that we as an organization feel strongly about. Um, for information on scholarships, it's on our website. Um, if you want to just you know, check it out, there'll be instructions. Uh, essentially, you'll have to just submit a, a form, an application form. Um, it's reviewed, and obviously, if it's approved, then you would hear uh, feedback, and, and you'd be able to apply that to um, your current credit. Um, yeah, there's there there seem to be some some specific questions to 
and either specific age groups and, and, and teams and coaches and things like that, that, that I would recommend, as Kevin said, for people to uh, email directly to um, Brian or Blair. Um, to just confirm, Kevin, um, registration for these families, um, two things. Number one is um, they are required to register through uh, the King's Hammer website in order to get an offer on either a green or gold or white team. Yeah. Isn't that correct? That's a good question. Yes. So just go back to this slide right here. Uh, the, the first step is registering online. So you, you'll be able to click the program. It'll be King's Hammer Sycamore. You'll be able to select that program. As you go through the registration, you'll be able to click on the specific age group. And from that then, We'll have the information on the back end to obviously be able to form the teams and essentially make those offers directly through Demosphere. If somebody is registered incorrectly for like say the wrong program, they should go ahead and re-register for the Sycamore program. Is that correct, Kevin? Yeah, that's correct. Um, we, we've seen this already. Obviously from the announcement, we had some players that went ahead and registered for the academy program. Um, if you go onto the, the King Summer Sycamore page, um, it's all specific now by King Summer Sycamore. We initially had some of the academy information up there, but we removed that just in case that was confusing. Um, if you have registered for the academy program, like I said, it, it's gonna be very difficult to get a true assessment this year, given the circumstances that were faced. Uh, we will have uh, more evaluations and assessments as we go through the spring. But for uh, those players that, that want to come back to their team, absolutely register again for the second work program. And I'm only able to, to see that on the back end and make sure that you've got contact at the right time. Okay. All right. Um, as I say, there seem, seem to be some pretty specific questions um, about about some some teams and stuff. So I'll recommend that everybody has specific questions about an age group or a specific team from the previous year. Um, you know, to be re reaching out to um, you know to to Blair and Brian. Perfect. Um, the the I think uh, Kathy probably can should will be able to jump in. I, I, one more thing. It said, um, would we pay the two, the registration fee before the offer? The so. Kevin, the registration is just that, a registration. Um, once they've accepted or declined the offer, that's when they would actually have to pay the deposit. Am I correct? That's correct, yeah. So just go through the steps real real quick. Step one is register. Okay, what's going on currently, of course, it's important to provide feedback for current uh, coaches and, and players to have that opportunity to have that conversation. Uh, rosters obviously will be created you know, based on, on some of those conversations. On Tuesday, we're, we have to wait until Tuesday to make an official offer. We want to make sure that we're obviously following those rules that are set forth that are very important. And on May 26th, you'll get essentially an email. And with the email will be an offer. And with that offer, um, you can hit accept. And if you accept, obviously, you have to pay the deposit then. And if you decline, then obviously your, your commitment wouldn't be held uh, or your place wouldn't be held. Uh, and coaches would go on uh, and make all their offers to other people. Um, and then like we talked about, the, the coaches right here are gonna be providing uh, continuous feedback as you go through. Hopefully that answered yeah. that question. Okay. So we'll go through to registration, Vince, and, and Kathy can maybe just talk about it. just a couple of reminders. We maybe have hit on some things as well, but if there are any additional questions specific to that, we'll be happy to answer those. Yeah, I think the only thing I was going to uh, remind everybody is that if you did register in the Sycamore Premier um, Demosphere site, you'll have to go in and register on the King's Hammer site now. And I know they've met, everyone has mentioned it a couple of times. You can get to it from the link I sent that was at the bottom of the email I sent about the Zoom meeting. I have reminded people who re registered in the Sycamore Premier platform. I sent an email to all of them and said you need to re-register at this site. You can also find that link on the King's Hammer homepage. You click on the Sycamore tab, and on there it'll say re there's a red button that says register now. But it is important that you get in there and click King's Hammer Pre Academy Sycamore. We'll get you onto our green, gold, and white teams to get an offer. 
Thank you, Kathy. Uh, Vince, any other questions? Um, we we use um, parent administrators for our team. It seems as if um, the, 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 that they use them as well. That will continue. Is that right, Kathy? Still using parent administrators to help? That, yes. We're still okay. going to have a team admin. Yeah, that's yep. a parent. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, the programming, Kevin, um, is offered. Uh, it, is, it is for from August through the, the fall and the, the spring season. There's not, is there, there's not a, is there a fall and not a spring offering or a vice versa? So there, there is, that's a good question and we've talked about that. There is the option um, to do that. It would, we would just have to obviously prorate the cost as we go through. And um, I've talked to Brian about this as well and I've, I've talked to John about this too. Uh, just the, the challenge is just making sure, one, that we, we know up front the plans of that player, and, and two, then we're able to uh, have that roster in a place where if a player is leaving or coming back, that you know, we can entertain that movement essentially, and, and it doesn't put the team in a, in a, a bind or a bad spot. So if you go back just to these, the program here, uh, as far as cost, we would just prorate this per season if that's the case. Um, you know, of course, we're encouraging players to play for both season, but we understand that there's other sports that might be considered. And, and if that is the case, then we just ask for transparency so then we can plan ahead and do the right thing. Uh, one last question. I think that will, a lot of people will be interested to answer there, Kevin. I mean, or just they might not be thinking of it right now. Um, the, the deposit that's made. It is, apply, it is applied to the overall fees. We just want to make, make sure everyone is clear of that. It's not in addition to the overall, uh, addition to the fees. No, that's correct. Yep. So if you're, you're paying $250, that's then taken away from the 625 or the 850 or the 1000 depending, of course, on the program that you're in. So you would have a remaining balance um, that you, again, depending on what you sign up for, if it's uh, a payment plan, uh, some people pay it off in one go. It really just depends on each family situation, but you would have to obviously pay out those remaining payments. It's not $250 then this. This is the all-inclusive fee. The $250 just secures obviously your position within your team. Well, it, it sounds like we're, we're finished with questions. And of course, if, there, if there's more specific questions, I would definitely encourage you to reach out uh, to, to Blur, Brian and Kathy, you know, depending on what the topic of the question is. Um, if there's any other questions as well with King's Hammer, please look at our website uh, for resource as far as contact information, things like that. Um, I just want to finish by thanking everybody. Um, John, I don't know if you want to sign off as well, but just on behalf of King's Hammer Soccer Club, uh, I can't overstate how excited we are to be able to come into this community and to be able to offer these programs, to work with some of the great people and staff that are coaches, uh, that are obviously administrators or directors as well, and to engage with, with the greater population. So we're looking forward to it. Um, I think everybody most likely on this call is, is looking ahead to brighter days ahead that we can get back on the soccer field and we've, we're hearing some more positive information coming from state. So we hope that is the case and we, we hope to see you out there soon. So thank you for your time. John, I don't know if you want to add anything else to that. Um, no, I would just like to thank all of our membership over the years. We've had some really great times and I promise you that there's better times ahead. Uh, this is a very exciting news and it's been carefully thought out and I'm just happy that everybody's going to be part of it. Our kids are in it, and we're very excited to see it grow. Thanks, John. Well, this will be recorded, and we will make sure that we post it onto the website too. So if there's any family members that didn't get a chance to see it, or if you want to go back um, and, and view it as well, we'll also post the hard copy of the presentation itself, um, so that way you can look at it more intently. But Thank you all. Have a great evening. Uh, we appreciate your time and we hope to see you soon. Thank you.